This video is about sedative hypnotics. Welcome to Med which Made Simple. If you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so that you will not miss any of my medical videos and you can watch them all for free. Before starting this video, I would like to thank you all for 10,000 subscribers. I hope we will reach 1 lakh subscribers very soon. So sedative hypnotics. As the name suggests, sedatives are the drugs which cause sedation which is basically decreased responsiveness and hypnotics are drugs which cause sleep. What are the drugs uh, which are called, uh, what are the dr uh, sedative hypnotic drugs? We'll see about them. Let's classify them first. We have barbiturates, benzodiazepines and there are certain other drugs. We'll talk about all these drugs in detail in this video. How do they act? The mechanism of action of these drugs are more or less similar with some minimal differences for each of these drugs. I'll be telling about the common mechanism of uh, the common things which are present in the mechanism of action of these drugs first and then the minimal differences uh, will be explained later. First of all, you need to know about the structure of GABA receptors. First of all, GABA, GABA is a inhibitory neurotransmitter. Uh, when GABA binds to its receptor, what happens is that there will be hyperpolarization of the cells in central nervous system and because of that there will be uh, central nervous system depression leading to effects like uh, sedation, hypnosis, and that's the basis for using drugs like barbiturates and benzodiazepines for the purpose of sedation and hypnosis. Okay, so there you go. You learned about the purpose of using benzodiazepines and barbiturates for sedation and hypnotics now only. So let's just elaborate uh, much about that. First of all, you must know about the structure of GABA receptors. As you can see in this picture, this is a, a representation of a GABA receptor. Uh, this basically has five subunits okay as you can see here it has five subunits the most important subunit uh, are the two alpha subunits this is constant okay and it can have uh, the remaining subunits can be two beta and one gamma or it, it is commonly two beta one gamma it can also be two gamma and one beta but there should always be two alpha subunits in the GABA receptors so for simplicity you can remember um, the GABA receptors has five subunits uh, and you can remember that there are two alpha subunits, two beta subunits, and one gamma subunit. The site for binding of drugs like benzodiazepines and barbiturates on the GABA A receptor is actually uh, different. Okay, so benzodiazepine, the site for binding of benzodiazepine, which is abbreviated as BZD here, is actually located between alpha and ga gamma subunit of ga GABA A receptor. And you must remember this, you should not forget this. Okay, I'm repeating once again. Benzodiazepines bind to the GABA A receptor at this particular site, which is present between alpha and gamma subunit. When this happens, what happens is that the GABA A receptor opens, and this will cause opening of the chloride chloride channel. Okay, this is actually present. This is this actually opens the chloride ion channel, leading to entry of chloride ion from outside to inside the cells in the central nervous system, and that will cause hyperpolarization. Uh, that is the cells. Uh, the action. The the potential of the cells will become more negative that is hyperpolarization this causes depressive uh, central nervous system depression and uh, it will manifest as sedation hypnosis etc and this is the same uh, basis uh, for basis of action of uh, barbiturates and benzodiazepines when it comes to uh, treating seizures also okay we'll talk about uh, seizures in detail in our uh, upcoming videos so as I told you benzodiazepine receptor is present between alpha and gamma subunit of the GABA receptor. Barbiturate receptor on the other hand is present either on alpha or beta subunit. It's not a fixed place like we had for benzodiazepine receptor. So uh, I'll, um, I'll tell it once again for you to remember. Benzodiazepine receptor is present between alpha and gamma subunits as we saw in the picture. Whereas barbiturate receptor is present either on alpha or beta subunit. There, uh, there are there may be a few differences between barbiturates and benzodiazepines when it comes to mechanism of action. But the most important point which everyone 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 must know is that the barbiturates increase the duration of opening of chloride channel. Okay, so when barbiturates binds to either alpha or beta subunit of GABA receptor, it causes opening of the chloride ion channel, and this opening which they caused. Uh, will uh, be sustained for some long duration. Uh, throughout the duration, there will be influx of chloride ion channels that will cause prolonged hyperpolarization, and that's how they carry out sedation or hypnosis. So, 
barbiturates increase the duration of opening of chloride channel. Whereas benzodiazepines, on the other hand, increase the frequency of opening of chloride channel. As you can see here, when benzodiazepines bind to the site which is present between alpha and gamma subunit, what happens is that there will be increase in the opening of the frequency, uh, frequency of the opening of the chloride ion channel. For example, um, let us say if uh, normally the benzodiazepine receptor chloride channel, uh, the benzodiazepine receptor opens uh, for five times per minute. Once benzodiazepine binds to the benzodiazepine receptor, what happens is that it opens about 20 or 30 times. That is, it increases the frequency in the same time. Okay. So previously it was opening uh, for five times per minute. Now it opens for about 20 to 30 times per minute. So it just increases the frequency and not the duration of opening of the chloride ion channel, uh, like uh, which was done by barbiturates. Okay. So telling once again, barbiturates increase the duration of opening of chloride channel whereas benzodiazepines increase the frequency of opening of chloride channel that's the difference between the that's one of the most important difference between the mechanism of action of barbiturates and benzodiazepines rest are same okay so you can actually uh, write the same mechanism of action uh, you must remember uh, you must uh, try to remember the site of action is different for benzodiazepines and barbiturates and the one difference which is present uh, between barbiturates and benzodiazepine is that Barbiturates increase the duration of opening of chloride channel, whereas benzodiazepines increase the frequency of opening of chloride channel. You must also remember this, okay? So don't worry. When you watch this video multiple times, you'll actually get it. So let's talk about barbiturates. Barbiturates, uh, uh, in barbiturates, there are drugs which are long acting like phenobarbitone, short acting like pentobarbitone, and ultra short acting uh, drugs like thiopentone. Actually, there are many drugs in each category but i just put the most important drug in each category um, because most of you guys who are watching this video right now will be watching it for the first time and so i don't didn't want to uh, scare you off uh, while watching this video so just try to remember one one drug in each category when you're watching it for the first time and when you're revising uh, this uh, when you're revising this topic again and when you're watching this video for the second or third time you can actually take your textbook and you can uh, add one one drug uh, to each category so that it'll be easy for you to study okay so tell it with me once again uh, for you to remember the long acting drug is phenobarbitone short acting is pentobarbitone and ultra short acting is thiopentone the, the uses the important uses of barbiturates are phenobarbitone is still used in epilepsy and uh, thiopentone is a drug which is commonly used in anesthesia and barbiturates are not commonly used as sedative drug these, these days um, because of some adverse effects which are caused by barbiturates and benzodiazepines and the and some of the recent drugs which are discovered recently are actually found to be better than barbiturates when it comes to uh, cause, uh, when it comes to sedative effect okay so barbiturates are not commonly used for sedation these days so some of the adverse effects of barbiturates are that it, can, it causes hangover the next day uh, like when you take barbiturate, uh, barbiturates in the night uh, it can cause hangover the next morning and there are high risks of dependence uh, patients will find it very difficult to stop using barbiturates and in some patients some susceptible individuals hypersensitivity can occur now some important points about benzodiazepines there, there are drugs like diazepam, lorazepam, clonazepam, clobazam, alprazolam Fluorazepam, triazolam, midazolam. Now here I actually put uh, so many names in benzodiazepines because uh, most of these drugs are actually important, and you'll be using using most of these drugs uh, in your clinical practice um, in your day-to-day -day, uh, basis. Okay, so uh, I, I, I actually thought it would be better if you guys uh, uh, actually these names are actually not so tough to remember. Also, so I thought I just put the entire uh, list of the important drugs in benzodiazepines right away. And you, when you just uh, see it at least once, uh, it will passively diffuse into your brain, hopefully. So I'll just tell some important points, points about each drug here. And you can read the rest in your textbooks, okay? So I'll just tell the important points in the upcoming slides. Metazolam, it is one of uh, the commonly used drugs uh, these days. It, uh, it is actually ultra rapid a drug which has ultra rapid elimination. It gets excreted rapidly and that's, uh, the duration of action is very short, okay? So since the duration of action is very short, the people, uh, the, the, um, if you prescribe this drug on oral 
base uh, as an oral drug for uh, sedation or hypnosis but the problem is that the patients will develop uh, dependence very easily because it's a very short acting drug and they will develop the urge to use it very frequently so they have stopped prescribing um, midazolam as an oral uh, prescription and as an oral formulation and uh, nowadays midazolam is commonly used as anesthetic drug can be used for induction of anesthesia and it is also used as an anti-epileptic drug if you if you have seen the uh, the the, uh, the flow chart which is given in Harrison for the treatment of uh, status epilepticus you would have seen that midazolam is at the top okay so midazolam is one of the uh, commonly used drugs for treatment of epilepsy especially status epilepticus these days uh, especially in pediatrics Alprazolam is a drug which is used as a pre-operative medication drug uh, so it actually helps to relieve anxiety in patients who are going to undergo surgery Diazepam is a, is a, a very old uh, benzodiazepine it has uh, effects on controlling anxiety insomnia it is a muscle relaxant not not a very good muscle relaxant but a fairly good muscle relaxant it's an anesthetic and it also helps to control seizures so previously it was uh, one of the most commonly used uh, drug for the treatment of status epilepticus but nowadays lorazepam has changed that a story and lorazepam has become the drug of choice for treating status epilepticus okay so this is a very important fact to remember lorazepam as of now is the drug of choice for status epilepticus adverse effects of benzodiazepines are less compared to barbiturates um, the next day of taking bar benzodiazepines for example when you take benzodiazepines in the night the next morning you may have dizziness vertigo amnesia all these are because of residual cns depression because of the drug you took the last night and uh, there is a, there is uh, there is there are few chances uh, that uh, you may develop dependence when you take benzodiazepines and you'll find it difficult to quit uh, taking benzodiazepines so that's about uh, benzodiazepines and I told you about some other drugs which I'll be talking about in this video which I used as sedative and hypnotics and those drugs are Zopiclone, Zolpidem and Zalaplon okay so it's a, uh, you can see that uh, all these drugs starts with Z okay so these are the other drugs which I used as sedative and hypnotics so they have more specific action compared to barbiturates or benzodiazepines okay that's because they, they act specifically on alpha 1 subunit of GABA receptor if you remember I've told you GABA receptor I got five subunits two alpha two beta and one gamma in the alpha subunit we have two further divisions alpha one and alpha two these drugs which start with that actually bind to the alpha one subunit of GABA receptor and uh, that's why they cause more of hypnosis okay so they can be used in the treatment of insomnia and uh, because of this specific action they don't have much other uh, effects other than hypnosis okay so binding to alpha 1 subunit will cause hypnosis and there will be uh, less anti-anxiety muscle relaxant anti-convulsant effect okay? these effects are less because they specifically bind only to alpha 1 subunit of GABA receptor so you should remember this slide which is very high yield and important duration of action uh, so these three drugs when we arrange them based on the duration of action zeleplon is the shortest acting zolpidem is intermediate acting and zopiclon is the long acting you can actually remember uh, this by uh, just arrange them in the order all these starts with z we can't do much about that so the second letter is a okay so we can put it on the top uh, when we arrange it in the alphabetical order when you arrange the second letter in alphabetical order this comes first and that's the short acting the second letter uh, in the remaining two drugs are o so we can't we cannot do much about that so the third letter is L and P. L comes before P. Okay, so you put Zolpidem in the second place, and that's intermediate acting, and Zopiclone is the long acting. Uh, so that's a simple hack to remember the duration of action of these three, three drugs. You can use it if you want. Advantages. Advantages of these drugs compared to benzodiazepines or barbiturates. They do not alter the sleep pattern. They just increase the duration of sleep, but uh, they do not alter the normal pattern of sleep okay the REM sleep and then non-rapid eye movement sleep they're not going to affect the sleep pattern okay so that's actually a good thing and there'll be minimal daytime sedation okay like I, I, I was talking about hangover effects when, when uh, well I was talking about uh, benzodiazepines and barbiturates um, but these drugs will have minimal daytime sedation compared to those drugs and they have low abuse potential compared to barbiturates or benzodiazepines so these are some of the advantages Nowadays, these drugs uh, have become 
one of the commonly prescribed drugs for insomnia. However, if you have insomnia, don't take this video uh, as a as, uh, this video is just for educational purpose. Okay, you should contact a, a healthcare personnel nearby you to get the most appropriate drug prescribed for you for treatment insomnia as these have adverse effects so you shouldn't prescribe drugs by yourself okay so i hope you learned something in this video if you did make sure to hit the like button it actually means a lot and if you take take uh, a few seconds to comment below it even more helps me and motivates me to make more videos and if you share this to your friends you don't have any idea how much it means to me and if you subscribe uh, to my channel press the bell icon you literally join over 10,000 people who have trusted me and subscribed to uh, My channel and moreover you will join our medwitch made simple family So thank you so much for watching this video till the end you can support me on patreon the link is in the description of this video and uh, You can uh, suggest what videos I should make next in the comment section below and I'll try to make that video for you guys Okay, thank you so much for watching th this video till the end. I'll see you in my next video